Good afternoon, everyone. We had a very good time in church this morning, and we want you all to join us and be happy. We are getting ready to start evening service. I'm ready to receive the word. We had a wonderful service this morning, and we are inviting you to join us in the service at 6 o'clock to have a wonderful service. Uh, es, tuvimos un servicio maravilloso esta mañana y vamos a, estamos invitando a los que nos acompañen esta tarde a las 6 de la tarde para tener otro servicio donde el Señor se va a manifestar. Dios les bendiga. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for lots of music presence once again. Truly, we did have a wonderful time this morning in the morning service this morning. Thank God that we are able to make it out for this evening service. We're going to go up and open up with a quick prayer right now. I just want to give God all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Lord God, thank you once again for lots of your presence this afternoon, Lord God. Pray that you bless this service this evening, Lord God. Pray that you would just touch our hearts and minds, Lord God. Just help us and keep us going, Lord. Pray that you strengthen pastor. Be prepared to preach your word this evening, Lord God. These things I can sign. Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to have a little Victor come up and sing a song for us. Today I'm going to sing Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And, and if you, you ever, ever saw him, him you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph. Joining in the reindeer games in one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? And how the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer, you go down in his story. Hey, Rudolph. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for that wonderful version of Rudolph the Red, those reindeer. Thank you guys again, once again, for your tithes and offering. Help promote the works of the church here. Just want to thank God, you know, that he can take the place to That's in Jesus. Hey, we want to thank you guys once again for joining us here in our evening service this afternoon. Pray that you would just let your hearts and minds just begin to just fall on God right now as we begin the service. I want you to just take a few minutes out to just put aside whatever you're doing right now. Just focus on God right now. Pray that you would give what you need out of this service as pastor comes right now to preach the Holy Word to us. Amen. Well, it's good to be in the service tonight. Welcome to everyone and with us. Appreciate all that God is doing. Had a good time this morning. God blessed. And we're back in service again uh, Sunday evening ready to give God all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank God for all that God is doing, and I trust and pray that you allow God to bless us. As uh, Tammy mentioned, uh, we want to invite you back to our uh, service Wednesday night at 7.30. So we'll be online, and if you could just join us, it would be a blessing. We're going to sing and have some fun times and just really just have a good time with our church family. So that'll be Wednesday night at 7.30. But tonight, I want to look at Matthew chapter 2. And we're going to begin reading in verse 9. Matthew chapter 2, verse, chapter 2, begin at verse 9. When they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened the treasures... They presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh, and being warned of God in a dream that they should re not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And I like to look at that as my text this evening. Um, Matthew chapter 2, beginning of verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they parted into their own country another way. And I like to preach that message this evening. Did you return a different way? Let's pray. Father, thank you right now, God, for your goodness, for your mercy. 
We ask God that you have your way accomplish your divine will. Lord God, we just ask God that you have your way. God, meet each and every need. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Some have made it to God. Some have thought about God. Some have, at some point or another, maybe even participated in a religious activity. <clears throat> but somewhere along the line, that's all it was. They're going to an event, going to a function or something, and they stop. They didn't go much further than that. Sometimes uh, people are trying to do one thing, trying to reach a goal, and then after they reach that goal, then they stop. They've been there for a long time. They keep saying that, uh, I don't know why I'm not going further with this situation, but you see, sometimes, again, people get to a goal and they stop. They're not trying to go beyond that, or, or the, the same due diligence that they gave to get to that point, they no longer give that same due diligence. I want to take a look at the wise men, how that they saw a star in the sky, followed after, put together their caravans, put together the means and the journey that they had, and they made it all the way to Jerusalem. But when they got to Jerusalem, that was not the final end of the journey. There still were other things that had to be done. I want to remind everybody this evening as we talk about it for a little while here, that just because you make it to a church event or because you uh, come out and you shake the preacher's hand does not mean that you've made it and that's the end of the journey. That's only a part of the journey. You see, what we want to end up doing is begin to realize that there's more that we need to do. There's more that we have to get accomplished for Almighty God. No longer can we just say, you know, I, I did enough. I got to point A and I stopped right there. I look at the wise men, how that they had things they had to do. Not only did they have to get to Jerusalem, but when they got to Jerusalem there in verse 2, he said, where is he that is king? Because we have seen his star. Not only was getting to Jerusalem important, but seeing the king, worshiping him, giving all the glory, giving him the gifts that they had prepared for him, that also had to occur. I want to look at this morning. Did you return a different way? You see, one of the things that we take a look at is that they had to make it, first of all, just to Jerusalem. That was a long journey in and of itself. That was the time that they had to put together. There were things that had to be done. And as they began to do that, they had to begin to make up their mind to go all the way there. Sometimes people have a thought in their mind, and they stop along the way. They may see the star, like uh, the wise men saw the star, but after that, they don't go any further with that. Sometimes people have a thought, I need to go to God, or I need somebody to pray for me. And then they stop right there. But I want to share with you that if in order for you to get blessed, you've got to go beyond that. You've got to be able to speak to God and allow God to be able to speak to you. You've got to be able to get to the house of God or the place of God, wherever it is that God is directing you, and listen to what God has for you. You see, when these men made up their mind that they wanted to see the star and they wanted to see Jesus, or rather see the Messiah, and they had all their gifts and things that they were ready uh, to give, they had to put their journey together and begin to think about what the journey was going to consist of. As we are worshiping God today, we have to think about what our journey is going to consist of. We need peace. We need strength. Somebody said, I don't have a whole lot going on right now. There's so much family drama. I, I need help with this. There's other situations going on. And so that's the thought, that you need help. Thank God for that. But now we have to go to the next step in getting help. And that is, we've got to get to God. We've got to get to God and, and allow God to be able to move in our heart and mind and to be able to bless us and be able to get from God exactly what we need of. It's not enough just to acknowledge that God can help us. We've got to go to the very next step, and that is worshiping God, getting a hold of God, and allowing God to bless us. And those online, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've seen a lot of the churches are online now, and people saying, okay, I want to, uh, somebody said, I'll pray for you, which ours, we definitely say we'll pray for you. And people submit their prayer. Pray for me, and I want you to join me in praying. We're going to do that. But now, because you've sent that prayer off electronically or digitally, and there's now uh, somebody praying for you, is that the end of the story for you? No. You've got to get a hold of God, surrender yourself to God, and begin to have that time of you and God being able to speak to God, and allow God to be able to meet your needs. You see, I serve a God that's able to bless and able to accomplish a great things in heart and mind. In fact, the word of God tells us that no good thing has to withhold from those who walk uprightly before Him. We just need people to keep on going with their journey go one way and maybe and let God deal work in your heart and mind and as God touches you he will help you go a different way see people make it to God they make it to a, a prayer and they, they understand they have God but that's not the end of the story when you make it to God you've got to be an, allow God to bless you have to allow God to move in your heart and mind and so they made it to Jerusalem and then they made it to the house 
as they made to the house, so they God directed them, and, and they were able to get to Jesus. Uh, now they got there uh, after, I think it was about two years old, and they offered their frankincense. They offered their myrrh. They offered their gold. They made it to where the next step in their journey. And I want to share that, that in our serving God, we have to do the exact same thing. We've got to make it to the next step. We've got to make it to not only the first thing, but we've got to keep on going and make it to the next step. There's things that God has planned for us to do in our walk with God. So many times as we're talking to people, they say, well, I've made the church. That was good enough. But making the church is not good enough. Just coming to the building is not good enough. There's something else that must occur. It was not enough just for the wise men to make it to Jerusalem and stop right there. They had more that they had to do. If we're going to get our blessing, we've got to go the full extent of the journey that God wants us to go through. We have to make sure that we're in doing the adventure. You see, I look at it this morning, uh, this evening, as we're worshiping God, that there is a, a path we have to take. And God wants us to walk that path. And I know sometimes people want to stay, you know, they're walking on the path of God. I'm, I'm good now. I, I made this point. I'm stopping. But you see, I want to share with you something this evening. As they made it to that step, the house, and then they were getting ready to go back home, which was going to be the third place God wanted them to be, God spoke to their heart. Don't go that way. You need to go a different way. There was an ambush waiting for them, and there was danger of path where they were going. And so that God wanted them to get off the path they were on and get on a new path. Can I share with you this evening? God still wants people to get on a new path. God wants people to begin to realize the path that you're on before and to change your path. You see, one of the greatest things when we can say we got to God and we're serving God and we're doing what God wants us to do. That's one of the greatest blessings that we can have is when we know that we're in God's will and we're doing what God wants us to do. Sometimes as I try to challenge people in their walk with God and as a minister, I want people to be blessed. I want people to be able to feel the goodness of God and be able to experience God in a reality. And so different times as we're trying to uh, teach people through discipleship, Bible studies, hey, God can touch you. God can bless you. God can help you. And they say, well, I've never experienced God like you're talking about. I've never experienced God to the fullness of what you're teaching in this Bible study. And the reason is, <clears throat> somewhere along the line, you stopped. You made it to a church, and that was as far as you went. Maybe you made it to a Bible study. And that's as far as you went. But there's more that you have to do. As you begin to allow God to speak to you, and allow God to direct you, He definitely does. And God's going to draw you closer. That the Word of God says, all that come unto Him, who are heavy laid, God will give you rest. We have a made-up mind to serve God with everything within us. And we want to keep on going the way God wants us to go. I want to encourage you. Don't stop just because you made the church. Maybe you came to this uh, uh, online service this evening, and, and you say, well, I made the church. Don't stop and be happy with that. Put in your comments if you want prayer. Put in your comments if you want somebody to call you up. But the main thing is we have to keep on going in our, in our spiritual journey. There's more that God wants to do. Did you know God wants to heal your body? God wants to touch your mind. You know that God has a, a, a financial blessing for you. I told somebody one time, I said, I want you to serve God with everything within you because I believe that there is a blessing with your name on it. But you've got to keep on going and, and be faithful to God to receive the blessing that God has for you. God has a blessing as he's beginning to deal with our heart and mind, and God has allowed, uh, wants to bless us. But one of the most important things we can see here from the wise men is that God spoke to their heart. And they turned around, and they went a different way. You know, when God is speaking to wise men, they listen, and they begin to go the way God wants them to go. <coughs> There's so many times as people are going through their life, that I don't feel that they're, they're, they're changing. They're not allowing God to perfect, perfect His perfect will in them. God is guiding us. <clears throat> God is directing us. God is dealing with us. And God wants to bless us. And if you allow God to speak to your heart, God definitely will. And one of the important things that what God says here, and let's read it here tonight. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they depart into their own country another way. You may come one way. But God's going to direct you in other ways. You come in a sinner, but you should walk out of saints. You come in burned down, and God can take your burdens, and you should walk out with joy unspeakable and full of glory. As you begin to allow God to change you and mold you and to make you what He wants you to be, we give ourselves unto God, and we allow God to help us in our life. We allow God to speak to us and change us and to mold us. And so sometimes people say, hey, He's not doing that in my life. I see God blessing you, but He's not blessing me the same way. Did you stop along the way? Have you given up on God? Are you still going down the path that God wants you to go down? You see, they had to make it to Jerusalem. 
Then they had to talk to Herod. Then they had to make it to the house where Jesus was at. And then they had to make it all the way home. Home was God wanted them to be. They had to go back. That was the will of God. But God wanted them to go back a different way. And it matters tonight that we are in God's will doing what God wants us to do. As we give ourselves to God and allow God to speak to us. Now, think about this. What would have happened had God not spoken to them and they kept on going the way they were going to go? Well, we know that Herod would have killed them. They were warned of danger. They were warned to go a different way. And as they began to hear the warning, God was able to help them and they made it back to where God wanted them to be. I believe with all my heart, if we listen to God, God will help us in this life. There's times that there's things that planned for us against us. The enemy's already got things set up against you, and there's already things that he's trying to plan to keep, take you down. But as we walk the path of God, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There is a path that God wants us to walk down, and God will illuminate that path with his wisdom and his guidance. And as we begin to go the way God wants us to go, did you know you can make it to the next playlist? I can make it from point A to point B. I can make it from point B to point C. As we walk with God, and as we allow God to lead us, and as He is speaking to our hearts, we will absolutely get to where God wants us to get to. Sometimes I talk to people, and they'll say that I, 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 I didn't get the same thing. And I just believe that somewhere along the line, they did not allow God to speak to their heart. You see, God loves you tonight. God cares about you. In fact, you're loved with an everlasting love. You're drawn with kindness. He's drawn you. He wants to do work in your heart and mind. And so as long as we're staying on the path and we're listening to God and we're walking with God, there's nothing that God can't do. Uh, David said one a couple of things. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. The more we give ourselves to God and the more we keep ourselves constant listening to God, what God has to say to us, God can help us to walk down a different way. Your life should take on new meaning. So if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Because all things are become new. As we give ourselves unto God, as we allow God to speak to us and guide us and direct us, things are changed all the time. And so we look at this. He has a work for you. He has a will for you. And as we surrender to his will, God is molding us and making us to be mighty workers for Him. As I talk to different ones, one of the things, challenges people have for me sometimes is that I don't feel like I'm doing the work of God. And quite honestly, the answer may be, you may not, may not be. As you're giving yourself to God, God convicts us sometimes and we're not doing all, all. Sometimes we compare ourselves to somebody else and we say, well, they got to point A, so I'm good just sitting right here at point A. But maybe God has something more for you. He wants you to take you down a little bit further. Maybe he's got them there for whatever reason. If that's all they can deal with, or maybe there's something God wants them to do. But that's not saying that God won't continue to take you down further. God has a path for you. God has a will for you. And if we get in the habit of not trying to compare ourselves to everybody else. They said, God, what would you have me to do? And there's nothing that God can't do. God can take you as high as, he, as God can. In fact, God can take you all the way to the mountaintop if you will allow him. I can, I'm concerned as we did with different ones that sometimes people are of the mentality, I'm good right here. And they stop. And they actually give up on the blessings of God. You know, there's nothing that God can't do. There was a question asked at one time, is anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer was no. Nothing's too hard for God. God can heal. God can guide. You know what? God can even comfort. All you got to do first is keep your mind focused on God and let God speak to you. As Jesus begins to speak to you, yes, you're going to go a different way. Sometimes people say, well, I don't want to change. I want to stay exactly the way that I am, and I, I don't want anything to change. But as you say yes to Jesus, you have to say no to the world. As you say, God, come into my life. Take away my sin. God, make me a Christian. You will begin to change. And as the master is molding the clay into the vessel that he wants, so God is molding us into the image that he wants us to be. We are made in the image of God's your son, and God is molding us and making us into the Christians and the warriors that he's called us to be. I know God may, I know that sometimes it may seem like God's not doing anything, but as we are content, staying consistent with God and allowing Him to speak to us, I believe there's blessings on our way. I'm going to be praying this week for different ones. I want to be able to pray for you. Please put in the comments if we can pray for you, if there's something that you get going on in your life, if, there's a, if you need prayer about something, please put in the comments. But as I'm praying, you see, the thing that struck me that was so important is that they kept on going in their journey. And they hit some snags along the way. Again, Herod had some, an ambush for them. 
but they made it to where they need to be and they stayed in the very will of God. If you will stay in the will of God and keep on going the direction that God wants you to go, keep saying yes to God and obeying his word, there is a blessing for you also. I know sometimes it may seem like I don't have the money that I need or oh, I don't have the patience or the peace or the strength. But he's moving. Even now, my God is moving. We're getting ready to pray. And as we pray, please put in the comments what we can be praying for. But I want God to speak to your life, and I want you to be able to go a different way. Not the same way that you came in, but I want you leaving out a different way. Allowing him to speak to your heart as you surrender your all to God and trust and obey and allow God to bless. I want you to begin to do that. Let's pray right now. Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness, your mercy. I ask God that you have your way. Accomplish your divine will. Help us, Lord God, today to give you all the glory and all the honor. And we praise your name. God is blessing. God is moving. We're thankful for the goodness of God. But I don't want you to get stagnant in your Christian walk. I don't want you to stop in your Christian walk. I want you to be able to keep on going and allow God to speak to you and direct you. And as he directed the wise man a different way, that same God will speak to you also. I'm Pastor Tucker with New Testament Christian Church. We're going to be praying for you this week. Let us know how we can pray for you. Join us in our Christmas caroling. God bless you. Our prayer.